There's been a lot of hype sneakers over the last few years, but arguably the most hype series of sneakers has been the collaboration between Jordan Brand and Travis Scott, especially if resale prices mean anything. And arguably the crown jewel of this series has been the Jordan 1, both in the high top version as well as the low top. But this pair right here, the Jordan 1 Low in the olive colorway is rumored to be the last Jordan 1 that we will see as part of this collab. Did they save the best for last? How does this colorway compare to some of the previous ones we've seen and also why I I think Jordan Brand really dropped the ball with this release. We're gonna get into all of those topics in this video. Let's go. So these released on April the 26th worldwide for a retail price of $160 or 160 euros. And based on the rumored stock numbers, these were supposed to have the highest stock of any previous Jordan 1 low Travis Scott. Doesn't mean that these were easy to get. I took an L, had to pay resale for this pair. But what makes this release different than every other Jordan 1 and Travis Scott shoe we've seen is that this was a woman's release. And at least here in Europe, there were no men's sizes at all. The highest size that these went up to on the sneakers app was 10 and half men's. I wear a US size 11 so they didn't even make them in my size here in Europe so I ended up getting these in my girlfriend's size for this review. And honestly I really have no idea why Jordan Brand decided to do this. It just makes no sense in my opinion. This is by far one of the most hype shoes from Jordan Brand. They know that everyone wants this pair and they didn't even bother making them in big sizes. And as a fan of the shoe I am demanding an explanation from Jordan Brand here. What was the thinking? What was the logic behind that decision? If they made these in a full size run they would still sell out every single pair. I've said this many times, my absolute favorite shoe that I own is the original Travis Scott colorway. I'm just a very, very big fan of this series. So a colorway this clean, I definitely wanted to cop for myself. And not even having a chance to get these and these might actually be the last pair that we see. Yeah, I was very disappointed. On behalf of sneakerheads everywhere, we demand a response, Jordan Brand. Let us know why you didn't make these in big sizes. I did hear that in the US, these did release in some bigger sizes. If anyone can confirm that in the comments, let me know. Anyways, rant over. Let's get into the shoes now, starting off with the box. I like the box on these. You get a box with a nice glossy finish. Most of the box is done in a sail color and the Nike logo is done in olive and it actually has a matte finish, which looks really good on this box. Unfortunately, this box doesn't come with that sleeve that you got with the Fragment Jordan ones, but it's a nice box regardless. Opening up the box, you get that pink paper and pink and earth tones have been pretty much the color scheme that we've seen used on all of the Travis Scotts. And getting into the shoes, you can say that the color blocking on this pair is very similar to that most recent colorway, the reverse mochas, except that the mocha panels have been replaced with black. You still get those white leather panels on the mud guard as well as the eyelets of the sneaker and also on the heel tab. And the color that the sneaker is named after is seen on the swoosh. You get an olive color swoosh here. What do you guys think of this olive colorway? How does it rank compared to the previous colorways you've seen of the Travis Scott Jordan 1 Low? I do like this colorway a lot. It's not my favorite to release so far. I would rank the OGs at number one, the fragments at number two, and at number three, it's a toss up between these and the reverse mochas. I definitely like these much more than the phantom colorways, so I have these as a solid number three overall. Let me know down in the comments, of course, what do you guys think? This pair also comes with a lot of different lacing options, and honestly, they all look great. I also put all of them on the shoe to help you guys decide which pair of laces looks best. You do get some wax laces here, and the standard ones that come with the pair are done in white. If I were to pick one favorite however it would definitely be the olive laces which I think look great with the swoosh and also still provide you some contrast. I would probably have the black laces at number two. Personally I'm a fan of when laces match the tongue. The red laces I wasn't expecting to like them so much but I think they look super fire as well. Looks really nice when combined with that olive green. Let me know down in the comments which of these colors of laces do you guys like best. Also very quickly just want to remind you guys if this is your first time on the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button. I put on every pair of laces on this shoe. I always go the extra mile for you guys. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. I am dropping a lot of content every single week. On the back of the shoe, you get that familiar Cactus Jack logo, this time embroidered in red, and also the Jordan 1 Wings logo on the right pair. Also wanted to comment on the insole on this pair. It's a pretty different insole. It's got a bunch of different logos on there. It looks like a racing jacket. And I do think the theme of this particular colorway was a bit more of a racing theme because alongside this shoe, we also had the release 
release of a leather racing jacket, which personally I thought was absolutely fire, but yeah, that price was a bit out of my price range. Looking at the materials on the shoe, the white panels are made out of leather, and then you have some nubuck on the toe box as well as the swoosh. Honestly, they're not amazing materials. It's pretty average for a pair of Jordan 1s, so that's something you might want to keep in mind if you're thinking about paying resale for this shoe. A lot of people were saying that they saw a lot of glue stains on their pair. I will say on my pair at least, I don't seem to see any, so maybe I just got lucky. Now these sneakers are officially called the Travis Scott Jordan 1 Low OG, and in this case, it really deserves that OG name because it's one of the few Jordan 1 Lows that are actually true to the OGs. The shape are almost identical to the OGs, also the swoosh on the medial side. And then you might not notice this, but this pair does have eight different lace holes, which is not something that you see on all the other Jordan 1 Low quote unquote OGs that come out nowadays. Most of them have seven holes, and that's something you pretty much only see nowadays on the Travis Scott Jordan 1 Lows. For sizing on these, now first of all, these are a woman's release. So if you guys have never purchased a woman's pair before, just remember that you need to go a size and a half up if you are a male, meaning if you're normally a men's nine, then you are a woman's 10 and a half. Some of the previous Jordan 1 Lows, like the Fragment Lows, did fit a bit bigger and you could have gone a half size down in those. But with these, because they are a woman's release, typically women's Jordan 1 Lows are a bit narrower than men's. So I did end up getting these in my girlfriend's true size, which is a men's six or women's seven and a half. They do fit her quite well. There's not really any room in the heel area, which is something I noticed a little bit with the Travis Scott fragments. So with these, I do suggest going with your true size. And of course that is your true men's size. Looking at resale prices on these, they are absolutely absurd, especially in the bigger men's sizes. Most of those bigger sizes are well in the thousand dollar range at this point. For the women out there, you guys are in luck because the prices on these are much, much lower than, for example, the reverse mochas in your sizes. Most of the Bay sizes are going for around 500 to 600, which aren't too bad compared to the reverse mochas. What we've noticed with the Travis Scott Jordan 1 Lows is that these do kind of stay in that same price range for quite a long time. They don't really go up or down. There's pretty much constant demand for these. So if you guys did want to buy a pair, don't expect prices to start coming down, especially since this is rumored to be the last ever colorway. Overall, the Travis Scott Jordan 1 Low in the olive colorway, are these a cop or a drop? Now I know that there's a lot of people who aren't aren't fans at all of any of these Jordan 1 Travis Scotts. And the reason is because they feel like there's nothing really special about the shoe. It's pretty much just a reverse swoosh on a regular Jordan 1, which is kind of true, I'll admit, but that doesn't keep me from being a huge fan of this entire collection. I love especially the earth tones that they use on the sneakers, the heavy usage of brown, blacks, and whites. And I think this olive pair is just a great addition to this series. That white and black combination makes these especially a very wearable pair of shoes compared to some other colorways. Ways. And even though I'm pretty sad that I wasn't able to enter any raffle for these in my size, I pretty much took an L on these before these shoes even released. It doesn't take away from the fact that this is a great looking pair of sneakers. And it's just kind of sad that we won't be seeing any more Travis Scott Jordan 1 Lows. They had a great run. But with that being said though, these are pretty dope. They are a cop. Let me know, of course, down in the comments, what did you guys think about the Travis Scott Jordan 1 Low Olives? Do not forget to follow my Instagram and TikTok links are in the description as well as my sneaker podcast. I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for stopping by. Peace.